In this video, we're going to set up a centralized syslog server running off of Fedora 30. Now, I've done this before in a couple of different other distributions. Fedora has its own intricacies, so we'll see how that changes our plan. Now, the first question you may be thinking of is, what is a syslog server and why do I want a centralized syslog server? Well, every single device on your network, a Linux device, a switch, even an IP camera, they all generate log files of some kind. And you probably want to look at those log files occasionally. Now, the problem is, is that if I want to look at the log files for this firewall, I have to go to the firewall in order to get those log files. Some devices don't hold those logs very long, so if it's been more than a couple of hours or a couple of days, those logs may no longer be there. Uh, additionally, there may be situations where something happens on the firewall and the switch and the router, and I need to know which happened first. What was the sequence of events between the router and the firewall? Uh, was there an attack from outside in or from inside out? So most of these devices, you can actually forward their log messages using a protocol called syslog to a centralized syslog server. So if I send all of these logs to my one syslog server, the next time I need to look at error messages from my Linux host, well, I just look on my syslog server and I can see all of the logs pertaining to that system. And then I can also see all the events uh, for this Linux machine as it ties into the Windows machine and our IP cameras and all the other network devices in our environment. Because everything's in one place, I can easily search for it uh, and correlate the events between them. So what steps do we need in order to do this? Well, we have six steps right here. Uh, first off, we need to configure our logging location. So I've got my Linux host right here, and we'll go ahead and do that. I want to go ahead and store all of my logs in the, it's, uh, excuse me, slash var slash log slash syslog directory. Now that directory doesn't exist already, so I need to, as root, go ahead and make that directory, sudo mkdir for dir, make dir. And I want var log uh, syslog. Prove I am Justin so that I can go ahead and run it. So I now have the location where I want my logs to go. I want them to be stored in this var log syslog directory. I'm not too concerned about permissions at this point because, well, the root user is going to be the one running our syslog and the root user is going to be the one reading the logs almost always. Uh, therefore, I don't necessarily have to change the permissions beyond that. Next step is I want to open up the firewall. Because all of these messages are coming across the network, I need to allow the network to accept them. So in order to do that, what we do is we use the command called firewall-cmd. What zone do we want to change? Well, we want to change the public zone. And what do we want on the public zone? We want to add a port. And that port is going to be 514 slash UDP. And we want this change to be permanent. Now syslog can operate off of both UDP and TCP. So I'm actually going to just up arrow, go back to that line there, change UDP to TCP and now I'm just going to run firewall CMD uh, in or with reload to make those changes take effect Amy all right we are step two down that was Open the firewall, configure the fire locate, uh, the log location. Those two are down. The next step is to install our syslog. Again, an easy step. Uh, in order to install our syslog, we use the dnf install command with our syslog. 
This will take a minute. It's going to evaluate its database, see if it's up to date, uh, and then go on up to Fedora servers, download the latest version of our syslog, and install it for me. And while that's finishing, uh, step number four is to configure our syslog. And this is really where all the magic comes. So in order to configure our syslog, the configuration file, we need to uh, edit. So sudo vi, because it's a configuration file, you always need to be running as root. And we want to edit the etsy rsyslog.conf file. There are two edits we want to do in here. First off is we want to enable a couple of modules. The modules we want to enable are these two right here, uh, one for UDP reception and one for TCP reception. So what we do is we just edit the last two lines out of each of those. So we remove the comment from in front of the module and the input and from the module and the input. So this means it will now accept uh, messages via UDP on port 514 and messages via TCP on ports 514. The next thing we need to do is we don't, we want to organize all of the messages that are coming in. Uh, all of these messages by default will end up in one giant file uh, which, hey, if we only have two or three devices, it may be perfectly fine. But if we have two or three hundred, then we might want to separate them out into their own separate files. So I'm just going to scroll on down to the very bottom here. And I'm going to go ahead and add in my own rule. What I want to do is I want to create a template. This template I'm going to call per host log. And I'm going to say that I want it to store files in slash var slash log slash syslog. And then I want it to name that file off the host name that comes from the syslog message. So what this will do is it will create a file in var log syslog and then it will store any logs based off of the host name of the log itself or from the logging message. So once that template is created, now we have to put some logic in here to tell it to actually start using this template. And so I'm going to create some, uh, some commands here from host-ip starts with 92. Uh, so what this is doing is this is evaluating the from IP for the host and it says hey if you start with 192 dot so my network is 192 uh, if mine was 10 it would be 10 dot otherwise you know whatever my local network would be then and some funky command here that says to run the per host log so if this IP starts with this, then go ahead and use this template. And then lastly, because now we've gone ahead and used this template, we want to tell it to go ahead and stop processing any other activities. This is actually the last line in the log file here. I'm sorry, in the configuration file here. So it's not explicitly necessary. Uh, however, it's good practice anyways. So let's go ahead and save that and then restart the system CTL, restart uh, the R syslog process. And really quick, I want to just view the status. And that's great. There's no red here in the screen. That means it loaded up the configuration. Uh, I've had it pop up a couple of times with some error messages there. Off, oftentimes it was a simple typo, uh, specifically the H for host 
wasn't capitalized on one line, but was on the other. All right. So we've configured the log location. We've opened the firewall for remote systems to access us, uh, to send messages to us. We've installed syslog. We've configured syslog to receive messages across the network, as well as put them in their own separate file every time. Now what we want to do is we want to test it. Uh, if this was a production network, I could simply go out to my routers and switches and configure them to send messages to me. This is a virtual environment that is composed of one virtual machine. Therefore, I can't necessarily do that. I instead have a script here, which will help us simulate this. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and download it onto this local machine. I'm going to use the command wget in order to download it. Uh, copy and paste doesn't work. Sometimes copy and paste just does not work. Uh, in that case, I just type it. raw.githubusercontent.com slash code slash syslog dash generator slash master slash syslog gen one.sh and if I did that without any typos github user content dot cm I did not do it without any typos there we go uh, so I now have the script file I need to edit it I need to add modify one little thing in here um, Basically, what I want to modify is my destination here, and I'm not entirely sure what my IP address is. So, I'm gonna open up a new window here. I have config tells me my IP address is 192.168.0.121. And so that's what I want to change my destination to. And while I'm here, I actually want to uncomment another line that simply shows me what's going on. And cross our fingers, that should be everything we need to do. Uh, let's mark this as executable and go ahead and run it. So this is echoing out exactly what it's doing. It's going ahead and running netcat. Uh, it's sending to my IP address on port 514 UDP, various syslog-esque messages. They're very basic messages, but they're messages nonetheless. In this other window, we should now be able to, as sudo, we should be able to view or do an ls of the slash var slash log slash syslog folder. And there we see our log files are being generated. Uh, in fact, if I do an ls dash l, then we can start seeing that the sizes increment over time. So there we saw, let's see, 192, 190.2 went from 338 bytes to 470. Uh, so basically what's happening is all these messages are coming in. They're simulated. They're really, really boring messages, but they're coming in theoretically from different hosts, different sources. Our syslog server is receiving them and is now organizing them into their own files. And so I can actually tail one of these guys with the slash follow switch. And we'll see as the messages are coming in from dot two there, our logs will increment. And by this way, we can actually watch just those error messages for those devices we want. Uh, or we can look at all the error messages across all of the devices based on our timestamps. Uh, or any other method that we might. So it was a success. That's great. The one final step that's remaining 
is to set up log rotate. So by default, these log files will grow and grow and grow and grow. And a couple of weeks or a couple of months or even a couple of years from now, our system will crash because the hard drives are full. In order to fix that, there's a program called log rotate and you just tell it, hey, look in this directory, rotate these log files around and on, on a daily basis and then delete the old ones. So that's what we want to do. Going to go ahead and cancel my, my sample script here. And the log rotate files are in uh, slash var slash bar excuse me etsy slash log rotate dot d and you can see all these services here that all have different log rotate sessions uh there is one for our syslog so i'm going to actually copy that uh let's see uh let's see log rotate d i'm going to as root copy the rsyslog and just call it syslog. Uh, the file name it, in and of itself is not important here. Now I'm going to go ahead and edit that syslog file and we'll see how it works. So what happens is up here is a list of all of the files that we want it to look at. And then down here is all of the settings we want it to do. So we don't want it to look, we don't want our new file to look at these logs right here because we already have something that looks at those logs. I'm gonna go ahead and delete those. And then I'm gonna add in that I want it to look in var log syslog and then star.log. That way it'll look at all the log files that are in my system. Most of these commands are pretty much what I want. Uh, specific, there, there are lots and lots of options. You can look at the log rotate settings. What I want in here specifically is I want to add in a rotate. Rotate 365. And what this means is it will go ahead and it will rotate all of my log files for 300 through 365 iterations. And I want it to do that daily. So now every single day it will go through and it will rotate my log files. So this uh, 192.168.190.2.log uh, will at midnight or 2 a.m. ish, whenever the log rotate command runs, it will rename that to a dot one at the end and then create a new log file for me. And it will do that for 365 days and then it will and it will compress them as necessary. After 365 days, uh, it will go ahead and delete those. And in fact, we can even add that in as another option, max age 366. Uh, so it will go ahead and delete all of those files for me and make sure that everything is nice and tidy. One year of log files actually turns out to be quite small. So you're actually not, not having to worry too much about the environment, about your system's environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And that should be everything. We have gone ahead and configured our log location. Uh, best practice would actually be to put this on a separate drive. So feel free to add a new hard disk to your system and mount it to that uh, same location, var log syslog. We then opened up our firewall to allow all of our remote devices to send us syslog messages. We installed our syslog system. Uh, there's lots of different syslog programs out there. Our syslog currently appears to be one of the best. We configured our syslog to not only listen to the network and accept messages from it, but also to put every single network message, network based message into its own folder. We tested it. It was a quick and dirty script, but we tested it and we saw that it did in fact work. And then we set up log rotate in order to 
maintain the system in the long run.